Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Mornings with the Masters, where we devote ourselves to the Lord daily with you. Good morning, you guys. Good morning, indeed. We're actually switching things up, and we're picking up with new Morning Mercies devotional, which is one of our favorites. Uh, transparently, Tori and I read day five of the previous Refresh devotional, and we didn't fully understand it, so we decided, hey, yeah. let's pivot. Let's make sure we're moving in a good track, and uh, yeah, so without further ado, Tori's going to take it from here. Perfect. Let's do it. Today's devotional says, For the believer, fear is always God forgetful. If God is sovereign and his rule is complete, wise, righteous, and good, why would you fear? The words of Hezekiah, king of Judah, ring as true today as they did in the scary moment centuries and centuries ago when they were first spoken. Judah had been invaded by the powerful king of Assyria. Hezekiah prepared and armed Judah for battle, but that's not all he did. He addressed the people with a more significant issue. He knew that in these moments, God's people were often given to fear, and he knew where that fear came from. Often in these moments of challenge, the people of God would panic because they were identity amnesiacs. They would forget who they were as the children of God, and they would forget who God is in all his almighty power and glory. So at this moment, Hezekiah knew that he couldn't just be a good king and a skilled general. He must also be a wise pastor to his people. As they were preparing for the Assyrian onslaught, Hezekiah didn't want the people of Judah to think that they were left to their battle courage, their war experience, and their skill with weapons. He wanted them to know that they had been amazingly blessed with another ingredient, one that they could not, must not forget. So he said, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or dismayed before the king of Assyria and all the horde that is with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. That was in Second Chronicles 32, 7 and 8. There will be a moment when you ask, where is courage to be found to face what I am facing? Hezekiah gives you your answer. Look up and remember your God. As God's child, you are never left to battle on your own. Could you read that scripture for me one more time? Yeah, it says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or dismayed before the king of Assyria and all the horde that is with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. I love that scripture. I don't know if you guys have ever done this, but if you close your eyes and you listen to scripture being read over you, either in the Bible app, you know, you just press play and just listen to the voice or you're at church or whatever. It almost takes on this different feeling. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I can't, I can't honestly explain it, but something that stood out to me when you read that scripture was the tense of the language. When it talked about the very end, it says, and help you fight your battles, help you fight, not not just demolish everything instantly with a click of a fingers, but no, it's like, this is a process. This is something that happens. And something actually at the beginning of the devotional kind of points to the thing I was just mentioning. It was when King Hezekiah, basically the reason why he was encouraged to encourage his army, he said that Israelites were typically given into their fear. Right. And I was like, well, well, wait a second. Are these just a bunch of wimps? Like, why are they so quick to run to fear? It's like, well, they're typically up against a bigger enemy. Mm -hmm. For us, if we were walking around and we felt more powerful than our enemies or adversaries, we wouldn't have fear of provision, fear of victory, fear of this, fear of that. No, but typically the things that we're going against, the, the things we're struggling with are things that we're magnifying to be bigger than us. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're bigger in our own head. And that we need God to balance the scale and not only balance the scale uh, to be even, but to balance the scale in our favor. Right. And I just think that's so interesting about the way that devotional was written is that, we are people that 
typically want to turn to fear when things aren't looking good because the enemy tends to be bigger than us. But our God is bigger than our enemy. And that's something that we yeah. really need to embrace and hold on to. Powerful. And, you know, going back down to the end of the devotional, when it talked about help you fight your battles, I just want to remind you all and Tori and I that this is a process that whenever we have something that we're struggling with, it doesn't, we can't just throw up some Hail Mary prayer and expect everything to go away. This is a process. Sometimes it requires years of prayer, years of discipline, it takes accountability partners, it takes a process, it takes it takes getting to know God on the subject and in and out. And so I love that God is promising to be with us and help us fight our battles, yeah. not just rescue us from any little thing that we're struggling with. Yeah, this never became more true to me than in my labor. <laughs> when it asked that question at the very end, um, where it says, where is the courage to be found to face what I'm facing? I remember, and we will share like the full birth story over on our main channel on YouTube. But there were definitely moments where I was like, there's no way I'm going to get through this. Like, I mm -hmm. actually can't do this. <laughs> and I don't think I've ever been at a place like that in my life where I genuinely was like, at the end of your rope, I, I cannot get through. Like, I don't see the light at the mm -hmm. end of this tunnel. And I remember crying out to God and all I wanted was an easy button, right? Like all I wanted was just it's like the staples button. Yes, that was easy. I'm like, I just need an easy button right now. But the only way to get to the end was through it. Like I had mm. to go through the pain. I had to go through the process and God was with me through it, but it didn't mean I didn't have to go through it. And what was on the end of it was so beautiful. Like it made me forget the entire battle in a way, not, not the whole battle, but um, <laughs> some of it definitely uh, is still kind of ingrained in my memory. But I just remember asking the question and having to look up to the Lord to find the strength to push through and looking back at it, like finding God in that story, because I do think that sometimes we'll have things in our lives where we feel like God wasn't there mm -hmm. or God wasn't helping us fight the battle. But that's when we need to truly go to him in prayer and remember his character, because if we believe the Bible to be true, right, it's absolute truth. And so it says, God will never leave you and never forsake you. Well, that means in the middle of some of the hardest times in your life, when it's talking about battles in the Bible, that's hard times. There's death involved. There's pain involved. There's mm -hmm. like true, like suffering yeah. involved, but God was with them in the battle. Mm -hmm. God was fighting for them in the battle. So God's not going to always remove us from the battle, but he's going to give us the strength to fight. And so we have to have a different perspective. Again, I know we keep talking about this, but when we're looking at the enemy, when we're looking at that thing that we're so scared of, when we're overridden by fear, that's when we have to remember that our God is bigger than that thing. And our God is right beside us in it. Amen. You ready for me to pray, son, out? I am. Oh, Lord, thank you that you're just not some genie in the sky who doesn't have a personal relationship with us, God. Thank you that you are a personal God. Thank you that you fight with us, God, that you suffer with us, that you help us, that you support us, that you encourage us, that you're here for us, God. Help us to acknowledge that more and to be more grateful for you. Would you help us just to pause everything that's happening in the world, all the different ways we're being pulled in this direction, yanked in that direction, God? Would you help us press pause and just worship you in your goodness, God, and not worship you that you do good things for us, but just to worship you in your glory, in your majesty, to remove us from the equation and just witness how great and amazing you are, God. Help us to not be so concentrated on our own uh, issues that we lose focus of how big and how powerful you are, God. Once we have that correct perspective of who you are, God, it'll give us a better perspective of who we are as children of you, God. In your sons, let me pray. Amen.
Amen. Amen, God. Amen, God. Amen, y'all. Well, now is that perfect time to break out the worship music, break out the journal, and continue pressing into the Lord. Yes, and y'all don't forget that you are God's masterpiece. And don't forget that we love you. We love you guys, and we'll be talking to you tomorrow. Ciao, ciao, ciao.